We're going to start, guys.
the name of the Lord. 
bless you church. We'll see you soon. And Happy New Year. How's everybody doing? Good. Okay, so um, as you can see, we're a skeleton crew tonight. Our worship team isn't here, but we're here. You're there, and Jesus is here, and um, he's going to minister to us. So we have a few announcements tonight, and if the ushers would come up, we'll get ready to take the offering and pray. Anything going on as far as announcements? Okay, let's pray for the offering. Father, thank you so much. At the beginning of this year and every time we get together, we have an opportunity to give unto you, but there's something special about the first fruits of the year. So we pray, Lord, as we give unto you tonight, if we give sacrificially and whatever means that we have, it's an offering unto you, Lord. We pray that you take it and that you bless it and you multiply it and use it for your kingdom. Touch your people tonight, we pray, as they give in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. All right, I guess we'll get right into the word. We have no announcements tonight. That's kind of nice at the beginning of the year. There's always so many different things going on. We do have some things going on in the next few weeks, so um, you can check on our Facebook page. You can check on our website. And, of course, we'll be here on Sunday. Pastor Frank will be in the pulpit and um, sharing the word of God with us. You know, what? we pray for our people that are, let's do that. Let's pray for people that are sick and those that are not here tonight. Father, we pray that you would touch your church that you would touch actually people, family members that have lost someone. We think of Diane Wright who lost her sister this week. You're the God of all comfort. Lord, would you please comfort her? Be her strength in this time of loss. Be that family's covering and minister to them, Lord. And others who have lost family members, those whose um, elder Linda, whose mom has been sick and she just lost her stepdad and others that are sick with COVID. Lord, you see everything. You know all about it. You knew about it even before it came. We pray that you would comfort, that you would touch people, that you would heal people, that you would send forth your word, and that you would strengthen. For our sister Charlene, preparing for surgery on Monday, Lord, go before her. The doctors, prepare it all, Lord. Thank you, God, that you do all things well. You guide the hands of the physicians. You are the great physician. Touch her. Let her recovery be quick and remarkable and full and complete. Anyone else that may have a need tonight, Lord, as they reach out to you, touch and minister by your grace, your power, and your presence. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, Carol um, Parnados inspired me. On New Year's Eve, she shared a testimony. She shared a little bit about the blessing song. And um, it kind of got me thinking, and I thought, what a great message for the beginning of a year right? Deuteronomy, I love the scripture in Deuteronomy that says that the eyes of the Lord are on our land from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And, you know, we are the dwelling place of God as individuals. This church is a dwelling place of God. And it's good to know that the eyes of the Lord are on us from beginning to end, right? In any situation, any circumstance, he's with us. And so I thought his eyes are on us, but his hand is on us as well. And he blesses us. And when I say blessing tonight, I'm not necessarily speaking material blessing, although that is part of the covenant, but it's more spiritual blessing. And just the fact that we can know him as we do. We're blessed people. The people of God, we are so blessed. 
So I was thinking about the blessing song, and I thought, you know, we sing it, and it's beautiful, and we love it, and we get all stirred and moved. Well, let's break it down a little bit tonight. There's five different points in that blessing. Um, so the song became really popular, remember? I looked it up because I thought, I think it was just before COVID broke out, and it really was. It was on March 20th that Carrie Job and her husband sang it for the first time at Elevation Church. It was actually released just before things were breaking out and days before everything shut down. Coincidence? I think not. I think that God put that in their hearts to bring forth that song for this season, for the church to realize no matter what we're going through, we are blessed people. We're blessed because of all the points we'll look at tonight. Because he's with us, regardless of where we're at or what the situation looks like. So as we look at the scripture in Numbers 624, that's the basis for the song. So in the midst of fear, confusion, coronavirus, sickness, loss, there's a place of security in the Lord and the promises in his word that we look to, right? God's intention and desire to bless humanity is a central focus of his covenant relationship with us. For this reason, the concept of blessing is all throughout scripture from beginning to end. Two distinct ways. First, a blessing was a public declaration of favored status with God. When people are blessed, there's a favor on them. And second, the blessing and doubt, power for prosperity and success. The Old Testament word blessing is 600 times throughout the Old Testament. The majority of them are related to the word meaning to kneel, since one would kneel to receive the blessing. You don't have to kneel to receive a blessing, but that's what they did. And the Hebrew meaning of this is bringing a gift while someone is blessing. So the blessing was a gift is a gift while someone is kneeling. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob laid their hands on their sons and declared prophetic blessing over them and their families. God said to Abraham, all peoples of the earth will be blessed be through you and your offspring. God through Moses instructed Aaron and his sons to give this blessing to God's people. Aaron and his sons served as priests and those who possessed the priestly role had the, the privilege and position of laying hands on people and presenting a blessing in the name of the Lord, Genesis 14 and Leviticus 9. And today, as New Testament believers, we are a priesthood unto God, right? We are a kingdom of priests. If you've been born again and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we also are included in these covenant blessings that we receive and we give. Although we do believe physical healing and God's provision a part of the atonement and prosperity and success, but primarily the blessing we're talking about tonight for us as believers is spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every blessing in spiritual places, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Deuteronomy 28 speaks of blessings for obedience and cursing for disobedience. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, only to say that God loves us so much and he's very serious of, about our behavior and our actions. In the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28, it's related to obedience. If we're obedient, God will bless us in, in all these different ways. Take some time and maybe read through it. But in the next 50 verses, three times as many, there is a curse for disobedience. So I think God is, is really serious about what he was saying to the people of God in those days, you know, to not be tainted in their relationship with him, to not be affected by what was going on in the world and the heathen nations around them. And the same is true of us. God wants us to walk in covenant blessing because he knows the danger and the damage of us walking outside of the covenant with him. He has a, a covering for us, and his desire is to bless us so that we would shine and we would be a light and a blessing to this world in darkness all around us. The Bible says that the blessing of God will lead a man to repentance. Where in perilous times could it be that God desires to pour his blessing and favor on us, not so that we can hoard it or boast about it, but so that we could share it? with those that don't know him, right? And I'm, when I say blessing, I'm not talking financial, although financial too, because we can take and give to people. 
but in other ways, that we would walk in his anointing, that we would walk in his presence, that we walk in the fruit of his spirit, that we would shine and people would see something about us and they'd say, talk to me. How come you have peace in the midst of everything that's going on? That's being blessed. That's God's favor on us. That people would be drawn to Jesus. The difference would be such a contrast to what the world is experiencing. Amen? That's the kind of blessing that we want to walk in. So let's pray over this word tonight. Father, thank you so much. We pray, Lord, that you would add your blessing to this word that we're speaking about blessing. Your anointing, your presence, Lord, divide it up. I know there are different things that you've spoken to me through this, and there will be different aspects that you'll speak to the people here in the church and those listening online tonight, Lord. Take the bread of life, break it up, and feed your people what we need to receive. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who blesses, you're a God who loves, and you're a God that desires richness in relationship with us. We praise you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Years ago, I remember seeing a, someone that I knew for a long time that had been offended and had been a, avoiding me for about a year, and so I thought, I'm gonna, this is gonna be an icebreaker, so I'm gonna go over. So I went over and said, hi, so-and-so. And her response to me was, oh, God bless you. She didn't really mean that. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of thing. It was trite. It was insincere. It was routine. And so it wasn't received for what those powerful words really should be, what they were meant to be, right? We say God bless you too easily sometimes. We've relegated it to a sneeze, right? Somebody sneezes, oh, bless you, God bless you. It's taken almost the power out of the words. When we say God bless you, it should demonstrate love and encouragement to the people that we're saying it to. Look, the Lord bless you. Let's say it like we mean it and God's word back it up. This is what I want, not just words, but the reality of God's working in my life and working in the lives of those that we're speaking to. The blessing was one way of asking for God's divine favor to rest on people. When we bless someone, that's what we're saying, Lord, touch them. Let your presence, let your favor, let your healing, let your peace, whatever it is that they need, rest on them, bless them, Lord. So Numbers 6, 24 through 27, we're going to read it. It's known as the priestly blessing, and we want to look at quickly just the five parts of what this blessing included. So in Numbers 24, I mean 6, 24, in fact, I'm going to read verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Simple but powerful is what it is, this blessing, this priestly blessing that people pray at benedictions, people pray over people, um, you know, sick, People pray at the end of a prayer meeting, at the beginning of a prayer meeting. You know, they pray at family events. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. Okay. The first part, the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. That speaks of God's favor and God's protection. Bless and keep you. Favor and protection. May the Lord constantly bring good into your life. Let his favor be upon you. Bless you has the connotation of kneeling and receiving a gift from the Lord. He's blessing us. Finding favor means that we've gained approval, we've gained acceptance, or some kind of special benefits from him. The favor that's received from God depends on his good pleasure. He's the God that favors people in situations. It's up to him. And it's often extended in response to prayer and seeking him or righteous living. Favor and grace is a free gift. We can't earn it. It's God to dispense however he wants to do it. But we can chase after him. And we pray that his favor will chase us. Just like it says in Psalm 23, right? Psalm 84, 11 says, For the Lord is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. And no good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. 
So as we walk blameless before the Lord, not perfect, but in our hearts that we want to do the right thing, that we want to live right before him, that we want to honor him with our lives, his favor is going to be on us. His blessing is going to be on us. That's what I want. Who wants that tonight? Amen? Amen. The favor of a loving father. And, you know, some have a hard time receiving the blessing or the favor of God because maybe an earthly father that they had wasn't someone that they could um, say that, you know, was kind to them or imparted love to them, and, and they missed something, so it had an as adverse effect on them. And so it's hard to receive from a heavenly father that we can't see and we don't really know as we're young in our faith. But God wants to grow us in faith, and he wants to love us and show us that he is a father that cares, that wants to bless his children. To know his blessing and love and favor is healing and freedom to us. To know that God's hand is on us, to know that he speaks to us, that he touches us, we can feel his presence. It's an awesome thing, his blessing and favor. So may the Lord bless you. May you receive blessing from the Lord and keep you is the second part of that, the first point. Protect you and guard you and all that's sacred and precious about you, that he would protect your life, that he would protect your health, that he would protect your family, that he would keep you by his power, that he would surround you. Specific protection of the Lord to keep us, words that have a sense of guarding or watching over us, placing a shield or a hedge around us. The scripture says a hedge of protection round about us, right? For Israel, this was a real practical application as they were surrounded by enemies all around them. And God had promised to protect them in the midst of it as long as they were faithful to him and faithful to the covenant. So they understood this. So to them and to us, he is our place of safety. He's our place of refuge. He's our strong tower that we can run into for protection. David said in Psalm 17, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, a place of protection. God covered me under his wings in a real dark season in my life. It was difficult, but I was at an altar and just crying out to him, so broken, heartbroken, not knowing what to do in a family situation that was just gut-wrenching. And I felt as if he covered me with his feathers. I felt a hand on me, and I knew it was the Lord just touching me as I cried out to him. And I thought, wow, this is awesome the covering and the protection of God. He's hiding me under his wing. It was a precious time, but you know what I didn't realize as we were walking forward through that? It's dark under that wing. It was still dark, and we couldn't really see a lot, but we had the assurance that God was bringing us through. Even though we couldn't see much good happening, God was bringing us through because he had promised to protect us and to protect the people in our family that we were crying out to him about. I've heard people testify of knowing the Lord from childhood, never backsliding or straying away from him. This speaks of the blessing of his keeping power. He kept them. They said, that's my testimony, that God has kept me. I never fell into drugs or riotous living or you know all of those things that the rest of us did. And many of us have known this as well since we started walking with Jesus. We've seen his keeping power in our life, right? If it were not for the Lord keeping me, I don't know where I would be. Right through every trial, through every danger, toil, and snare, he's brought us through. And God's going to be faithful to the power of his presence to keep us as long as we hold on to him and we don't lose faith. Never looking back. So that's point number one. Bless and keep us. Number two is make his face shine upon you. That means that God is pleased with us. Oh, don't you just love that? To know the Lord is pleased with us when we want to walk in the blessing of God and the covenant with him, right? Who grew up feeling like they couldn't please anybody? You couldn't do anything right, you know, just kind of struggle through a lot of life. But the Lord is pleased with us. Have you ever seen a new parent's face when they hold their child or the baby's put in their arms? They're like, they're just beaming with pleasure over what has just happened. Their whole face lights up. God's face shines on you in a similar way when he looks at you. He's pleased with you. Or his precious children he continually looks on us and delights in us. We bring a smile to his face because he's pleased with us. 
we are accepted in the beloved. And even when we mess up and we come back to him and say, Lord, you know, I'm really sorry. I blew it again. He's pleased with that, that we come back and that we say, this was me, Lord. I messed up. I'm sorry. I hurt you. I disappointed you. And he forgives us. And it's pleasing to him that we clean it up, right? And he works with us in that. His shining countenance, smiling on us, as opposed to him hiding himself from us, right? Don't we think sometimes in our natural understanding that I messed up so God is mad and he's hiding from me? But when I come into the light and I bring it into the light and he shines on me, he reveals himself to me instead. And he's wide open. And what a privilege to have God open-faced to us at his ch as his children. And as we behold his glory, we are changed into his image and likeness. As we look upon him, as we look into his word, the mirror of his word, he changes us too. And uh, think about a shriveled, shriveled up flower after a major rainstorm, right? They're all just like kind of drooped over and you think, oh my gosh, they're destroyed. I just planted all these flowers in the spring and in the summer and destroyed but suddenly the sun comes out and those little flowers that look like they were demolished just begin to kind of rise up, stand firm as they face the sun and the rays of the sun bring life back into it. The warmth and light of his face is like that to us. It transforms us and he brings life back into us where we felt hopeless, right? The light of his face and the light of his countenance shining on us because he's pleased with us person's face can tell a lot about them, right? Some people look like, oh my goodness, I can't approach that right now. Eek. It's like, do not approach, do not approach. But that's, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that was, that's what they're saying. But there's brokenness, there's hurt, and it's coming on the face. You can tell sometimes if people are cheerful, if they're upbeat, if they're downcast, if they're discouraged, if they're angry, if they're happy, right? What about all those emoji expressions as we're sending a text, which one am I going to put the sad one, the one with the tear, the one with the smile, and the one with the goofy eyes, you know, right? Because we want to express a picture of what it is that we're saying or maybe feeling at that time. Well, people's faces do that. But the face of God speaks different aspects of who he is, his emotions, his thoughts towards us, the thoughts of God to us. And shining not only speaks of him shining light on us, but it speaks of order, him shining his face. In Exodus 33, we read the story about Moses when God calls him to lead the people of Israel out. And he says, Lord, unless you go with me, I, I don't know what to do. And God says that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. It will be okay. And when Moses would come out of the presence of God, after he had been with God face to face, the Bible says, God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Moses' face was so radiant that the people knew he had been with the Lord. He had had encounters with the Lord. And Moses knew what he had to do. There was some instruction in that process because he was right there in relationship, in covenant relationship, and he was seeking the only one that could give him what he needed moving forward. So God reveals his heart and mind to us as he reflects and shines on us. People should look at us and see a light and a reflection of him. They really should. We could say a lot of things, but when we zip it and people watch and people see, hopefully they're seeing Jesus, not by words, but seeing his life in us. May you know how beloved you are and walk in this confidence to be a shining light in the midst of this world that desperately needs the light to shine. It says in Philippians that we would shine as stars in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, that we would shine as lights, that as we are in his presence, being accepted, knowing that he's pleased with us and his face is shining on us, then we come out like Moses did and people see and we can be quick to tell them what this light is about and the hope that we have and why we can make it through in the midst of everything going on around us. Okay, number three, that he would be gracious to us. This speaks of his mercy and compassion. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. 
How many of us have messed up and feel like, oh boy, I really blew it. But God's mercy doesn't give us what that, that crime, what the payment would have to be for that, right? Grace is getting better than what we deserve. And we cannot earn it. That's God. He's gracious to us. He's a loving Father. And that's the blessing that that grace would be poured out on us, even when we don't deserve it, that God would give us what we need. And that's really more of him. We need more strength from him, that he would cover our sin with his grace as we get it right. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. When we think of someone as gracious, there's a level of kindness and tenderness about them, right? Isn't it attractive? Have you met people that just have a lot of grace? They're just really gracious. And it, you're drawn to it because it's kind and it seems so pure and so sincere. Well, that's the love of the Lord for us, his grace and his mercy. Gracious speaks of lift, lifting us up. That's being gracious. You lift someone up. You bring help and you bring healing to a situation or a person's life. That's God's graciousness, his mercy and compassion. He forgives our sins. He consoles our hearts. He prepares us for heaven. Being compassionate is him understanding that we are but flesh, that we fail, we mess up, we fall short. Yet he's always there to pick us back up, encourage us along. Even in our suffering and our brokenness, in times of weakness, in the midst of heartache, he sticks close and he gives us grace to walk through those difficult times when you think, how am I going to make it? So many times I thought, this is just too hard. I'm not going to make it through this. And I would be walking through it. Tom, Elder Tom and I would be walking through some things that were brutal. And I'd stop and say, either I have lost my mind or God has poured so much grace on us that he makes you almost kind of numb. You're just walking through and he's enabling you to do it. That's the grace and the mercy and the compassion of God. We're talking about the blessing of God. He doesn't have to bless us. He doesn't have to be so good to us, but he is. He is. And his mercies are new every morning. There's always a fresh start if we'll just turn to him. Acknowledge how blessed we really are to know him. To know him, to know him, to know him is to love him. Right? Number four. The Lord turned his face towards us. There's the face again. This speaks of him approving of us giving his approval. He's looking on us with approval. We can sense when we look at people or we encounter people whether um, they approve or disapprove of us. Anybody, have any, anybody like that in your life ever? You knew that they weren't particularly approving of you? And you can tell. You can tell by their countenance. You can tell by their demeanor. You can tell by, you know, without them even saying anything, right? Others are shy and embarrassed and shame-filled and can't even look into someone's eyes until the Lord comes and heals all of that. So many are looking for love and approval from man and never receive it. But God gives his approval to us. He loves us. He approves of us. This is our Father in heaven. Our first pastor, Pastor Cooper, um, we, were, we were just saved. And I'll never forget, he was our pastor for two years, two and a half years, and then he resigned to go back to Florida and plant a church. But he was either standing at the door when we would walk in or when we would leave, or he would be on the platform sitting in a chair. And he had the biggest smile. His face would light up. His cheeks were rosy. He was like a Santa Claus kind of face, right? Wasn't he like the, you know, one of those precious, just precious and whenever we saw him, and he just beamed, we just knew that he was shining the love of God, and there was approval from him to us. We were his children in the Lord, and we felt it, and we knew it, and we sensed it. There was a warmth, and we just felt drawn in, and he would give us these big bear hugs back in the day. And this is our Father God. He's fully attentive to us. He knows what we need. 
he's here. He's already at work. He's moving in our lives. He's reaching out, and he's already loving on us. Knowing what, that God looks our way with a sign of approval is healing, isn't it? Amen. Knowing that his face is towards us, he turns his face towards us, he hears our voice, and he goes to look at us and just receives us. We know that we can approach, that we don't have to stay at a distance, right? He approves of us. He does, he'll never reject us. He'll never forsake us. As long as we keep coming, it's the approval of God. Knowing that he looks our way, that his face is towards us, means everything. It really does. You know what his love language is? Quality time. I love that because that's one of mine. But God's love language is quality time. He turns his face towards us. He waits for us to approach. He wants us to be with him. We're accepted, we're loved, we're cherished, and he just wants us to come and receive blessing as we sit at his feet. Just sit at his feet. Don't even have to say a word. Just sit there. Just be. So... Coming to point number five. The Lord bless you, keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. Turn his face toward you and give you peace. Before I get into that, you know, when my grandbabies come over, everything stops. It's all about them. Sunday night into Monday night, I had one seven-year-old, and oh my gosh, whew, is she busy into all kinds of stuff. But we just went from one thing to the next. I just let her be. Tom came in, we were trying to get some stuff done in the house, and I said to him, no, I can't do that right now. It's all about Jenna right now. And then yesterday we had the little Pete at the 18 months. Same thing. It's all about them. And that's how God is with us. Everything else can wait. That's how he is with us. We have all we need when we have his attention. Just call on his name and he's there, turning all his attention and affection toward us. That is the blessing of God in our lives. If he never gave us another thing, just knowing that we can approach him, that he approves of us, that his face is shining on us, that there's protection, he's keeping us, and he gives us peace. This means may you know his presence and his peace. Not the absence of conflict, but the presence of the Prince of Peace. Because peace is a person. Shalom. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit, and peace is the person of Jesus Christ. Right? So after all these, him keeping us, letting his face shine on us, giving grace, showing his acceptance and approval, he comes and he wraps it all up and covers us with his peace. That's like the bow on the blessing. Right? Blessing you, keeping you, face open, shining, grace, mercy, compassion, acceptance, receiving, turning towards us, covered with peace, the peace of God. Peace with God, fellowship through Jesus Christ, peace with others, peace in adversity, peace in storms. Peace, peace, God's peace. Moses was overwhelmed having to bring the people of God out to a place that none of them had been before. But he moved with assurance that God's peace and presence would be with him. And God said, go, I'm going to be with you. And it's going to be okay because I'm going to give you rest. The peace of God, that feeling in us with his presence that all is well. Right? It is well with my soul. All is well. It floods our hearts. Floods our minds. And peace to that degree actually becomes a state of wholeness. That's really the connotation of that word peace that there's nothing missing, nothing broken. We're at peace with God, he's at peace with us, and he makes us whole, wholeness, peace. Three times in these verses, it says, the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face shine on you. The Lord turn his face toward you. See, because the blessing is God doing it. It's God does it, the Lord. New Testament speaks of the triune God. In the New Testament, it says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion and the fellowship 
of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of God, the Lord, the fullness of God blessing. How blessed we are to have the fullness of the Godhead involved in our lives. Really, I mean, at the beginning of this new year, and again, it's just a calendar change, but I like that Christmas is at the end and we celebrate the birth of Jesus and then we get all the stuff put away and we turn the page into a whole new direction now. Okay, even though it's just a calendar change, it's a fresh start. What are we doing this year, Lord? And to know at the beginning of this year that, that God has us, regardless of what you're looking at, regardless of what you come through, he has us and he wants to bless us with his presence and bless us with his peace and bless us with his grace and his tender mercies and covering. The Lord bless you. Remember I said before, bless means kneeling down. Not only refers to us or someone kneeling down to receive the blessing, but it literally also means he, not, not physically knelt down, but he literally stooped down to be face to face at our level to hear us and to impart his blessing on us. Isn't that exactly what happened in the person of Jesus Christ coming to save us? He stooped. He left his throne in glory. He took all his robes off, put on rags, stooped down, humbled himself, and came to this earth so that we could know him. What a blessing to receive and to give. Psalm 67 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on the earth and your salvation to all nations. Let me read that again. Psalm 67, 1. We're talking about the blessing of God for us. We've been talking about, right? But God blesses us to be a blessing. In whatever way he blesses us, be financially giftings. It's not to keep to ourselves. It's, we're blessed to be a blessing. Psalm 67, 1 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine, us, shine on us so that your ways, Lord, may be known on the earth and your salvation to all nations. We can't keep him to ourselves. We can't keep the blessing of God to ourselves. It's just the most important thing that we can do with our lives is that we would share Jesus Christ, that we would tell of the goodness of God, that we would share of his faithfulness, to us, even if we, and I think we sh I said this on New Year's Eve, even if we don't know a lot of the word, we have a testimony. We have the assurance that God saved me, God touched me. I couldn't have done this on my own. Let me tell you about this Jesus who saved my soul. Amen? Amen. So may his favor rest upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, within you. He is with you. He is for you. He is for us. He is for us. So let's make a commitment tonight as um, Fred's going to put the song on in a minute here. And Pastor Frank, I guess we'll close out the service. And I know it's a little early, but um, there's enough to chew on for tonight, right? Spend some time over the next week meditating on this, these scriptures and, and what those words mean. Do a little digging yourself. We are privileged people to be able to walk in the blessing of God, to be able to walk in a relationship with Jesus Christ who has saved us, given us hope, know that he's with us regardless of what we go through. I mean, is there anything more that we need? I searched the world for 30 years looking for looking for love, looking for something to fill the hole. Nothing would fill it. Nothing satisfied until I was 30 and came to know the Savior. And now, many, many years later, you can have it all. You can have it all. Give me Jesus. Just give me his presence, and I'm a blessed woman. 
And the same is true of all of us, right? Because when we have him, we have everything. And what we need, he'll supply because he wants to bless us and keep us. His face of approval shine on us. He'll look as we're calling. He wants to be gracious, compassionate. He's moved with the things that we go through. And he wants to give us peace. So I don't know what it is you need from the Lord tonight, but I know that his presence is here to touch you and to bless you and to minister to you. So let's spend some time worshiping him and maybe closing out in prayer and, and asking him to... Um, To what? Yeah, he is going to meet us in this place. And I, I don't think that we even really need to ask him to do anything because we just talked about all that he wants to give us. So maybe just ask him to make himself real to you, either by feeling his presence or through a circumstance that you have need of, right? Let's pray that in this coming year that the Lord would be really close and that we would feel his blessing, that we would see his blessings in our lives in little ways, that we would say, wow, Lord, thank you for that. Seems like a little thing, but it really was, was a little kiss of your favor on me, Lord. Thank you. Let us be quick to give him praise and to bless him back. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless. Let's not go after him for blessing. Let's go after him for who he is. And let's bless him. Lord, we kneel before you in our hearts tonight. We want to bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I want to bless your holy name. Be blessed tonight, Lord, by your people. Be blessed tonight, God, by our praises. Be blessed tonight, Lord, that we want to seek you. We want to know you more. We want to honor you with our lives. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Could you put that song on, Fred? God bless you. Happy New Year, everybody.